Hi, and welcome to our final Ask the Manager with Dan Morgado. This is it. This is it. So nice we one. thought we'd have Huey, Dewey, and Louie. No, <laughs> we have <laughs> Mo DiPaolo, John Laveau, and Jim Kane, mm -hmm. our selectmen. The other two selectmen had um, very important previous engagements and couldn't be here, but right. they regretted that they couldn't. Um, so we have 30 minutes with these guys, and then we have another surprise guest. All right. So. The What's surprise, happening? The surprise was ruined because <laughs> Mo let Dan know. We never tell Dan who the guests are, but with the final show. No, the, the, it, the surprise was I didn't know I did it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now I'd like to know, first of all, who, Mo, were you, the, were you all selectmen? You weren't all selectmen when, when Dan first came to Shrewsbury. No, you were. I just came to Shrewsbury when he came back. To just me and you. Okay, so. Yeah. What was it like for you, as you think back, when Dan first came to town? Well, I, I start before Dan first came to town. If you remember the discussions we had about how long is this next person going to last? Right. Because after Dick Carney for 40 years and having a guy of his stature, this guy makes it two terms, going to be doing good. Mm -hmm. Right. The um, under and it was a years. lot. Yep. They really, we were apprehensive about what was going to happen. Right. Um, and, and then when, when he came in, I, I, I think it was pretty smooth. Um, he... You know, Dan didn't come in, just, he's coming in, he came in the way Kevin's talking about coming in, easing into it, getting a lay of the land. Um, it was, I thought it was a very smooth transition. It was, I thought it was very comfortable. It was a little quiet in the beginning, not as quiet now, but in the office he was a little quiet. Was he? Yeah. I don't recall that part. I, I do. Yeah. Well, I was, I was, uh, I was younger and more, con more uh, concerned, I guess, <laughs> about getting selectmen angry with me. I don't know. But, you know, that was intimidating. Look, uh, from my perspective, when I was driving in, uh, when I crossed from Grafton to Shrewsbury the first day, I was thinking to myself, this may not have been a very good idea. <laughs> what did I do? Because that, had, that, that, that was a big concern. I remember one time saying to someone, gee, uh, boy, uh, whoever c takes office after Mr. Carney is not going to be in a short time situation. So you, you really had to really weigh that when you decided whether or not to take the job. But look, the support I've always gotten from the Board of Selectmen has made it really very simple. And, and Mo, he is probably, maybe, maybe he doesn't remember this, but one of the nice things that Mo uh, did, uh, he does many nice things for people all the time, was he had a little sign Thank made you. up. Uh, congratulations on your first year. Remember that at town meeting? Oh, at town meeting. At the town meeting. Well, did you have a cake? Oh, and we did a have a cake, yeah. yeah. So thoughtful. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, that was that meant a lot. Yeah. Uh, it was a, a sign. Yeah, we had it up, and after one year, maybe maybe yeah, because was he was happy. That, yeah. Maybe because in the pool, maybe he had it over one year in the yeah. pool. Maybe that was it. <laughs> right. But do you remember that? that yeah, was very, actually, that was, I very, do, yeah. that was very nice. Yeah, and, we had a big sheet cake made. And uh, you know, I've always I've I've had the pleasure of working for great selectmen that have done very nice things uh, for me over the years. And, really? Oh, sure. Well, you know, the board and, and this board uh, recently. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I ended up getting the coffee thing from my 60th birthday. Oh, yeah, right. But uh, Grafton, they uh, once g gave me a bumper. <laughs> uh, they had an image they uh, needed. Yeah, but tell me why you got well, the bumper. I got the bumper because I, I had bought uh, the cheapest truck I could find on the lot. Without a bumper. And it had no bumper and no radio. <laughs> and, and when I got my uh, graduate degree from Clark University, they, they gave me a present, and it was this big box. In fact, they'd wrapped it in all like a picnic tablecloth and it was a bumper <laughs> so no, I thought it was the sixth year you got a bumper <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I've had but you know uh, the, the boards all my boards that I've worked for have all been wonderful and, and it's really as I s start reflecting back uh, it's been really a pleasure to work for some great so many great people so John and Jim what were your first impressions of this guy well so Dan was hired September of 97? Yeah, September of, yeah, September. Yeah. So I, uh, there was a meet and greet, mm -hmm. and I came up and introduced myself, and actually I had no thought or intention of running for selectman then. <laughs> um, but uh, by December, well, I, honestly, Donna, I had heard, uh, no, in January, I was at a meeting with my son for his Boy Scout badge. I drove him up to town hall, and he had attended the meeting, and at the end of the meeting, you announced that you weren't going to run for re-election. 
uh, Selectman Polito had already announced that she wasn't going to run for re-election, and I quickly did the math that there was going to be two open seats. So, uh, <laughs> you can't get anything. <laughs> That's why he's chairman. I decided, to, it's I amazing. decided to run. But those kind of math skills. Right. So, so I've always been good at counting to three, which is important for the selectman yeah. business. Um, so I came on in May of 98, and Dan had been there for mm -hmm. less than a year. And uh, my uh, education began, um, and I learned. I've learned a tremendous amount from him, and uh, we've had some. I, I, early on, there were a few times he'd pull out the uh, the charter <laughs> and remind me what the powers of the manager were. He would actually take Push it out and show me when I had some idea Push of what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, and I've, and, I've and, always and, and, and there's <laughs> also that wonderful. Uh, chart this that Mr. Connie did, which right, actually right. I, I, I have it hanging in my office at work. Okay. In fact, I gave a I gave a copy of that to Kevin this afternoon. He was in, in the building, uh, and that's what Mr. Connie did in 19. The same thing. It said, look, because <laughs> look, when you take office as he did, you can only imagine what he was thinking, oh. being 30 years of age, right? Uh, coming out here, you know, the second person in, the first person lasted three years. So you got to be thinking to yourself. Okay, uh, and that was very clearly him on a piece of mylar saying, "Okay, this is how this thing is supposed to work," and we've used that chart, at, you know, countless times, uh, right, hundreds of times. The board, when the board was doing the programs, uh, used those constantly. So. It's interesting that you bring that up. That he would remind you of the powers because. Uh, when we interviewed uh, the candidates for selectmen, there were a few that talked about how they handled their boards. Yeah. And right. I, I was taken aback by that right. at first, and then I realized that's the relationship. How am I going to handle these people that I have and, to work with? And your reaction yeah, was probably, probably the, the same as mine, is the hair start going up on your neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not a handle. That's not, that's not like correct. But that's basically no, that's, uh, the re impression we were getting. You know, Board relations. It's, it's, right. <laughs> well, it's, it's, look, look I, I think there are too many, not, I shouldn't say too many, there's some people in my business that uh, I don't think appreciate uh, what it's like to be an elected official and, and the pressures of being an elected official and what that means to have your name on that ballot and, and having every you know three years or even initially uh, I had that experience only once, uh, and I got to tell you, it, it's uh, it, it's intimidating. You you know you know yourself. You you mm -hmm. won elections, you've lost elections, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you need people in my business need to recognize that and recognize that uh, those selectmen, uh, all elected officials have a very u unique relationship uh, with the voters. And Mr. Connie's chart shows that voters at the top. You know, all power comes from the voters, uh, and it comes to us either as uh, as elected officials or as uh, appointed officials, uh, and it has to be used correctly, or, or the voters will take it back, because mm -hmm. uh, you know, the system will write itself uh, eventually. But it's uh, handling the board. No, it's you know everyone has their job and responsibilities, and, and that's why it works works so well. So for Jim, what was it like for you? First impressions. I had met Dan years ago, at Clark perhaps, or in some yeah, other Clark setting. University. So when we moved to town, I put in to go on the sewer board, because I like infrastructure, moving lots of stuff around. And I never heard anything, so I called him and he said, geez, I got no record of this. I said, oh, let's do it. So then there's the fire station building committee thing coming up, and I had been on a building committee before, so I thought I'd put in for that. And I, I see, I read the paper, everybody get a phone call. I said, geez, I would have <laughs> thought I could have gotten a phone call. <laughs> so I called him again, and I said, geez, he said, geez, I got no record of this. <laughs> I'm thinking, what the hell are they running up there? <clears throat> so fine, then, I, then the Board of Assessors came up, and I hand-delivered <laughs> a letter and so forth, and then I got on the Board of Assessors, which was fun for a period of time. Um, so, you know, very serious, all business, all the time. Um, an occasional smile if no one's looking. But otherwise, you know, very, very, <laughs> you know, by the book, calling balls and strikes, that's what we do. Um, you hear some of the same support from great boards of selectmen, finance committee. It's true, I realize, and it, you're, you're, you're being truthful. But very much, you know, to the book, sticking with what he's here to do and focusing on what he needs to do for residents. Um, the level of customer service, I still think, is very interesting. 
I have gone into town hall on days off when a gentleman has been sitting in front of Dan talking. And so the, it, clearly the gentleman has an issue. Great, you don't interrupt. Come back an hour later, the gentleman's still in there talking to Dan. And I've asked Dan more than once, what's the, you know, what's your end point here? And he says, well, you don't have an end point in this business. People come in and they want to talk to you. It's extremely important to them. You sit here and you listen. You take notes and you follow through. And at the end of the day, I think that's one of those foundation elements um, that separates Dan from some other guys who would try to move people out, who would meet in another room so they could get up and leave when they were done. Not him. Someone from town has a problem. They can go in. They can sit. They can go through everything. And they can rest assured that you'll follow up. Or if it's in John Knipe's department, he'll follow up. And uh, I think that's, a, again, one of those foundation elements that sets him and the town hall culture apart from many others. So we used to hear that Mr. Carney was the dean of town managers. Hmm. And I've recently heard that about you. Well, have yeah. you heard that? No. Well, I, 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 I can't say I have. Some people have said that, but I think that's, you know, you're not the dean of anything until you've been doing it for 35 years, you know, 35 to 40 years. Oh, you have I, to be I, 35 to yeah, 40 or? 20 years. In one spot? Yeah, in one spot. I mean, look, when I got into the business, there were people like Mr. Carney and uh, Mr. Carter in uh, uh, community Weston and a few others. Look, Mr. Carroll is still in Norwood, Norwood. and uh, he's 50, 60 years, who, you know, oh I mean, God. he's been there for, Amazing. I mean, so those those are the deals. Uh, I, maybe I'm just like a second tier. <laughs> a lieutenant? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, but look, Mr. Carney, uh, the great thing with Mr. Carney and the people like him, Don Marquis, in Arlington, uh, you know, th these were people that were <coughs> setting the standard for what young people coming into the business wanted to uh, emulate. And uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't know really much about it. Mr. Connie and Tom Schuster until I came out here, until I applied for the job and came out here. And then I got, after working with him <coughs> for that period of time, you, you really got the sense, you now understood, you know, why people viewed, you know, his, um, his approach as being so valuable, you know. You know, keeping things calm, never, uh, you know, never running around the building uh, with his hair on fire and nothing like that. Uh, you know, understanding that things need to mature. Uh, let's let's all calm down here and thinking around the corner, thinking strategically, uh, and thinking about uh, you know what need, needs to be done and focusing on the infrastructure. I mean, but that was that generation of exactly. managers, uh, you know, coming out of this, uh, you know. Post World War II, mm -hmm. the the position of communities was: look, we need infrastructure to grow. We need infrastructure to provide a quality of life for our residents, and let's stick to our P's and Q's and focus on that. And John, you said you learned a lot from him. Oh, absolutely. Um, so we used to say we went to the County School of Business. So mm -hmm. I think the next round will say they went to the Morgado School oh, of Business. Oh, I have a, I have a, uh, I've audited, I didn't have to pay. <laughs> I, it wasn't that Clark. But yeah, I've audited at the Morgado School of Public Policy and Public Administration. Yeah, I, I mean, much to my great surprise, I wound up going into the business. Um, and I did it for six years and, uh, um, uh, so much of that, I mean, it wouldn't have happened were I not a selectman in Shrewsbury and what I learned largely from Dan. Um, I do remember, it's funny the things you remember. So I think it was right when I came on the board, I learned that uh, you have the department head meetings, is it once a month once or every month, other week? Yeah, first first, first Friday, Friday. 815 shot. And, uh, and I said I wanted to go to the meeting. And uh, though I think at least one of my colleagues, if not both, okay, you got into a department head meeting. I just went in and wished them all a Merry yeah. Christmas. Okay. So forth. Well, I still have the chairman's I, message. I, I, I still, I still, <laughs> right? I Christmas still, message. I, I, maybe I'll have. Absolutely. Is there going to be another one? There will be. The world, the first, yeah. So I, I said I want to go to the meeting. I'd really like to go to the meeting, see what it's all. And you said, John, um, that's really going to change the dynamic of the meeting. Yeah. So I've used that phrase about changing the dynamic of the meeting <laughs> ever since. It was a very thoughtful way to uh, stay out that's <laughs> it. and i've still never been to one damn it <laughs> you have one to go one to go well, there'll, be, there'll be one july 7th will be our last department meeting right. there you go. I, I get a question for jim because jim uh, a lot of people don't know this was a city councilor city of marlborough so when you came on the board of selectmen with your experience as a city councilor 
and now as a member of the Board of Selectmen. The were, first were, several were you, months. Were you thinking? What were you thinking? What were you thinking? The what first several thinking? months, I considered resignation on a daily basis <laughs> because I found it so horribly boring. Nope. Just dreadful. It was hell. Because first, the only job worth having is chairman. And then the next job worth having <laughs> is vice chairman because you're one hot beat away. You never know. You have, to, you, have to, you, have to, you have to prepare more for every Tuesday. God forbid he bangs in sick or something, right? And then clerk, you just got to keep everything nimble so you can sign. <laughs> so, you know, I do my exercises before every Tuesday, every other Tuesday, and I'm in good shape. But then if you're the number four and five person, I mean, you get elected, everyone celebrates your existence, and they push you off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they push you off the stage. You're on the end. <laughs> yeah, you're barely in the room. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's horrible. And then, you know, you got Mo telling you, I don't think you want to go down that road. And these other, you know, with worlds of wisdom. So you're trying to figure out, what the hell am I doing here? And you're running the railroad. And you've got a railroad to run. And, you know, I talked to you a few times and so on and so forth. But it was just horrible. Uh, and then I got used to the horribleness and then found a way of figuring, well, you know, it's like the Rotary Club. You wait. <laughs> One of these guys will cycle through. Maybe I'll go for clerk. Uh, but then I figured who liked to be clerk at that time. So Bruce. I, well, he, I know. Oh, no, that's Bruce. right. Correct. And then, uh, and so then I became vice chairman and then chairman. That was fun. And then, of course, the three-year cycle, you go back, and then you work your way. So um, it, it's just very different, first of all, because you're on the executive side here as a board of directors, whereas over right. there, you just criticize everything the mayor does. Right. But you know, Jim, so, the, the, the funny thing was that um, I can I can remember, um, you know, having little side discussions among the the other members, and you know, Jim thinks different than we do. It's like, it's a man, he came from a different place. It's like, no, it is. Whoa. It's very very different. It is. Well, and then the whole idea of town meeting was to just so foreign because you would never run a company with 240 people. You know, being the, if you trustees. will, the, you know, if you will, the trustees, and then this one guy gets elected, but then names these other nine to worry about the books with the manager, <laughs> and then again, people think we're on the board of directors, but we're kind of sort of over here as the five people standing by to stand by on some of these matters. <laughs> so it's very different. It's just, in, it's entirely different. Right. Which would you prefer? Oh, uh, I don't know. That. Well, personally, yeah. For this town. For yourself. Oh, for me. Um, Benign dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you? I think no. that's right. <laughs> yeah. no, I think that would be right. <laughs> People wouldn't be bothered with the details. <laughs> yeah, Jim once said to me, he said, you know, you know what the, uh, the definition of a city councilor is? He says, I said, no. He says, all the other people that want to be mayor. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it is. That's what yeah. the city council is. Okay. It's a scrum. Oh, God. Every, yeah. er, every meeting, it's a, you know, because yeah. everyone's trying. Because there's no, <clears throat> there's no uh, real responsibility there because you can just be throwing stuff out. Where you, are you, where are you on the board represent your ward or at large, depending right. on the situation. You know, let's issue an order, go. make a motion, send yeah. an order. Uh, uh, when you're at the bottom of the barrel, you never felt that way, did you? He was at the bottom of the barrel. Um, no, but I when did. Not there is chair, vice chair, or clerk. No, oh. it, no, because then, uh, um, when, when you chair, you got to try to stay up on everything. You have to because you're running the meeting, and, and so you, it's hard to concentrate on something you really have a passion about. But when you get off, then you can do, you can focus on things you want to do. But um, no, I never felt that way. I, I did, and yeah. that, um, it. You had to. You have to admit there was an adjustment period after you weren't chair. No. Um, really? <laughs> yeah. No. I just uh, wanted whoever was was the chair to move the meeting. Right. But and do their homework. No, I thought there was a. It was a little bit of a letdown, because you, because you're sitting back and you and you don't control the discussion. Of course, when Jim is on the board, you don't control the discussion <laughs> anyway. <but>, uh, <laughs> I can tell you that the first time I was chair, I felt like. The first time when I had my license and I could drive for the first time by myself, and then when you cheer, you sit in the seat and you go, "Whoa, <laughs> this is like when I got my license." Mm. And then the thrill's gone. No, I, I, I will say you're a team. Um, a couple of you did two years as a chair. Yeah, I, I will say after two years as a chair, you're like, "Please, please thinking? take it." You guys know? used to do it really? two years. We, there was no, one, it there just was, was coincidence. Somebody didn't want to take period it. Period when three wow. of us did it. Each of us did it for two years. Because other members didn't 
want, want, want to, to be take cheered. it, but and it, so we did it. But Jim Donahue, and I might have it wrong, he did it for like 13 or 14. <laughs> I mean, as chair. I mean, yeah. he was chair for well over 10 years. Right. We'll leave it at that, right. which is incomprehensible. He was just always. That was his title. He was chairman for life. Mr. Donahue <laughs> chair, board of selectmen. True. But I agree. The first, I can remember the first meeting I chaired, I think, went 90 minutes, and I was exhausted when it was over. I felt like it was three hours. Really? And then I can remember, as Mo said, you, you know, you, you chair right up to town meeting. You've got all these meetings. And then you walk into town meeting and <laughs> somebody else sit down there. there. <laughs> or you feel like you'd come in with your cutoffs and your flip flops and your sunglasses, and nobody would notice. I never Wait. felt that much. Oh yeah, I did a lot of doodling up here after I was chair. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you class. didn't doodle when you were chair? No. Oh no, no, oh, he's no. on his game. No. Oh. Uh -uh. Yeah. You know, you know, that's he's always that's always the age old question. You know, do you have town meeting before the election or do you have town meeting after the election? And there are communities that do it both ways. Because you're right, you do have that disconnect where the chair sort of leads the whole you know, expedition into the process and when it comes to the final, you know, moment, which is the town meeting, yeah. suddenly a new new chair is in, in place. So and, and I don't know if you remember, one year actually I, I was the chair, but we decided that Chair goes through the whole spring, goes through all that, and then the chair should go through town meeting. And we did it one year, and then we didn't do it again. Mm. Um. <laughs> I think whoever wrote the Town Manager Act, the two, did a brilliant job. It's really such great balance between the manager's hired to run the community, and he's given the powers to do so. And then the board does a few cute little appointments, but not too many. Um, it's, I think it's whoever, who, the 12 people that drafted that, I still think did a fantastic job. Yeah, and even, even the, I mean, what we were just talking <coughs> about, the fact that you have an election and you have two weeks or just about two weeks That's before good. a town meeting, you have a new member. I mean, thankfully, they have at least that two week period <coughs> really got a better handle on what's going on. Where I worked in Princeton, every town is so different. Elections Monday, town meetings Tuesday. So, wow. so you get, uh, you know, you got elected yesterday, and now you're sitting up three member boards sitting up there. Um, I do think having a little bit of a period of time to, for that first time to catch up, um, is very helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, that's well interesting. I, right. I, so, what was it like having? Long-term selectmen. You well, didn't have cool. new people. Uh, I, I, well, it looked, it's great having long-term selectmen because uh, <laughs> they're so hard to break in a new one. <laughs> 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 now that then, sounded like the people that uh, we interviewed. Yeah. The, uh, uh, you know, it's great. Look, I think that's been the strength of the town going back to the inception, 1953, that um, the tenures are extended and that... Uh, it's important because, look, a problem, you know, one of my rules of thumb is whenever someone comes in with a problem, I always say, okay, when was the last time it was a problem? And go back and look at that because mm -hmm. a lot of these things almost run in a cyclical fashion. Uh -huh. And uh, so it's important to have members of the board with tenure who know, you know, personal, with personal experience, how we got to where we are today, as opposed to having a situation where you have five members who are, you know, relatively short tenure and no one really knows how we got to where we, we are today. And that institutional knowledge is very, very important. So we've always had a situation where we've had <laughs> Mo on the board yeah. and then uh, some mid you know term and we always had one seat, it seems, since uh, Bruce got off the board. That's every every six years, every three years there's a new member. So they, you do have that mix of new and we have that now. Uh, with uh, Beth Cassavant on, on the board. So yeah, there was turnover, but there was stability. What did, but what did you say a, a while back? I served with 13 different town I managers. I mean, uh, 13 different um, a lot of selectmen. Select and you've served with an awful lot, a lot of, of selectmen. Select yeah. huh. But there still was longevity. Almost everybody was at least six years. But then, Donna, you, I mean, I, mean, I don't know what our time is. You had a period when you had four pretty well brand spanking Four new people, new <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Or and one they year person listen. and three rookies. <laughs> really? Yeah. They didn't like to listen. <clears throat> that's amazing. They were independent wow. thinkers, for sure, hmm. and that's for a while. That's a tough way to run an operation. Yeah. But, but, I, but I that's, but it's it very fun. important. For you, if you have, like, a licensing <coughs> issue with a proprietor or a company or something like that, you're able to have one member of the board of selectmen or two or more say, hey, wait a minute, no, no, when you were here six years ago or nine years ago, this was the deal, okay? And that's, you know... That's very important to be able to, you know, 
personally say, no, I was there. I, you know, don't say, you know, don't tell me that this <coughs> was the story because I participated, I was there. Of course, the other end of the equation is having a long-term town manager and department heads mm -hmm. right. who during the day are saying that, and then uh, you right. get a few key members on every other Thursday, Tuesday who say the same thing. Right. So that a there's a real balance. A, a in consistency that. of message is very, very important because, <coughs> you know, um, uh, whenever you have any kind of uncertainty, that's where you start having inefficiency and, mm -hmm. and problems and, and issues and the like. Now, do you think he's going to stop work on July 7th? Oh, we know he's not. We, we already hope know he's not. not. It wouldn't be healthy for him. <laughs> he should keep reading a lot and should keep working a lot. So, but it's kind of like driving an old truck. If you park it in the garage <laughs> all the time, it starts to break down, so you've got to keep it going. Right. We don't want my head gas. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in his DNA, I don't no. believe. And do you have any message for Dan? Or you can well, you can, you can yeah, back down the level of yeah. focus. Only focus those few hours a day that you need to do your work. Otherwise, unplug and enjoy your grandchild and your, the balance of your family and your wife's time. Sure, thank you. And you don't have to worry about calls mojitos. for snow and ice and anything else anymore. It right. snows right. out. Rubbish. What are you going to do? And, and if you ever have a problem and you want to address the board, <laughs> call him. <laughs> 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 question, question, question is, if I send something, will he find it? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a little concerned because uh, I, I didn't realize I lost all his all his stuff. Just for the board appointments I wanted. That's right, that's right. You know, but, but I, I have to say, one of the things that I think the board always felt, um, especially with the new manager, was I, all the members of the boards that I've been on, we run interference for the manager. We let the manager do their job. And, and I'm a little too serious sometimes and I take things a little too much. Oh. So one day, really? one day, <laughs> one day I was, no, 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 one day I was at a campaign uh, rally, right? And it was done at the Knights of Columbus in the, in the cellar and there were a couple of guys that actually, you know who I was friends with? And one guy said, who the hell does that Magado think he is doing this and blah, 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 it had something to do with another board. Who does he think he is? Hmm. Hey, but don't you talk about like that <laughs> about my manager. <laughs> Very protective. You do that again, and you're going to regret it. You're going to be sorry. What do you mean you're going to have to deal with me? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Wow, that was so that? we oh, ran into Ferris fan big time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you need to be. I, uh, I would hate to be a manager whose board is uh, undercutting him and sniping him. Yep. It must yeah. be a horrible, horrible way to work. It is. It is. Well, we've, you know, we've seen that in area communities, and we, we see how, how that result is. I don't, ever, I don't remember anybody on the board that I work with tried to undermine no, anybody, no, either, no. either manager. No, either no. The board has always team. been. No. Never. You know, look, you've, there have been times when you've said to me, hey, 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 hey this isn't working, right, you know, very clearly, and we've had those conversations. But they've always been done professionally and respectfully and privately and uh, and that's, that's all I can ask for. It's like I said the town meeting last, uh, the last night of town meeting is the only thing a manager can ask for is a fair hearing. Uh, and that goes with the, you're dealing with, the, with your board of selectmen. Uh, a, f a fair hearing is all you're entitled to ask for. Uh, and uh, with a fair hearing, if you're successful, it's because for the most part your decision making is sound. For the most part. Uh, if you're not successful with a fair hearing, it's because You've, you've totally misread the situation. And I think that's the critical aspect about being a manager is you're working for five different people and you need to, to be able to gather from those five people where the, the, the mindset of the board is. And one of the things that I've always been able to do in Shrewsbury on virtually any issue, even issues that the board hasn't formally discussed, if you were to ask me, where's the board of selectmen X, Y, and Z? Uh, the consistency of Sh Shrewsbury selectmen, I can pretty much, I can be pretty close to where the board would end up. Mm -hmm. Just knowing the personalities and knowing the interests and knowing, of course, the underlying philosophy of the town, which has always been um, keep your costs down, watch your cost structures, understand that the role of government has to be limited to what government can do well, uh, and understand that a long-term commitment is, is and a long-term uh, responsibility is paramount, and as long as you know, and that's I can I can always say that was that's the board's position, and, and that's and, and and that's a great that's a great position to be in as a manager, as opposed to 
saying, I don't know, I don't know where the board might be on this <coughs> issue or, or anything like that, you know. So I thank the Board of Selectmen for that. But you always got a fair hearing um, because you, you just had integrity and honesty that came through, and everybody saw it. And you did your and work. And that's why, and you did the work, right. You had the backup. You knew what you were talking about, and that's why you got a fair hearing, because if you didn't know what you were talking about, you wouldn't have got the fair hearing. But, mm -hmm. I mean, your preparation, the work you did, the, the due diligence was just incredible, and it, it was always at the same level. And I don't remember you ever going into a, an issue and not having all the facts behind you, mm -hmm. ever. So do you have a message for them? Thank you. See you around, clowns? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank will you. Will you see them? Of course I will. Of well, course you will. And we thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, yes. You've done wonderful things for this town, and we, everyone in Shrewsbury appreciates it. Thank you. And with that, thank we're you. going to take a break for the next guest to come on board. We have our special guest and our final guest for Dan's Ask the Manager. We have Luann Morgado, Dan's wife, and so it's only fitting that she has a chance to take a few shots at you, <laughs> yeah. just in case she hasn't over the years. No, well, of course not. It's always been bliss. And of course. Perfectly domestic. Like all trend, of us. Domestic tranquility. Partnership. There you go. But but it, it is is a partnership, and as uh, you know, uh, as a selectman and your your son being a, a trooper. And when you do this kind of work, it is a family endeavor. It is. Uh, because uh, so much, you spend a lot of time away from home, out of, you know, out of, the, out of the house at meetings and such. And you come home and, you know, there are things you have to take care of. And so uh, my success really is, starts with Luann. With the support that you've had all, all these years. And Absolutely. You could come home and be lazy or... Be no. Dan, Dan's never the secret been, Dan. Dan's never been lazy. He comes home anything. and busy bee run circles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh well. But it's you know it's a sanctuary, right? Your home is well, sanctuary. So yeah. if that's the case, when you retire, mm -hmm. if if you finish your yard and you right. finish all the work around your house, just work your way around the houses mm -hmm. to the next house till you get that's to right. mine, I get and to your, I get down we'll be all house. set. That's right. Well, <laughs> we'll give him a to do list. Right. Well, I noticed John was out doing work tonight. He uh, is. He was. He out had surgery on his knee, and he really shouldn't be there, but he is. So. Yeah. yeah, we live in such a nice neighborhood. Yeah, so he's finally getting back to be able to do, finish the front. Mm -hmm. Good. So good. It is a nice neighborhood, yes. and you walk your granddaughter around the neighborhood. Right. Yes. So That's right. She, she visited you. Came, she'll be came. getting more mileage That's going right. around once you're retired. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. She thinks his purpose is to play with him, her. So that's great, it isn't is. it? Yeah. 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 And it's a girl, and you had a son, so it's different. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Yeah. So, how do you handle that? A uh, daughter, having a granddaughter. Yeah, I, I, I think it's been very interesting. I, uh, I think it's kind of it's fun, not kind. It is fun. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see her grow up. Um, and uh, you have three boys. I have three boys. Uh, so it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. Uh, and every every week, as you know, you have grandchildren. Every week is uh, a different. Uh, adventure mm -hmm. more, more at this age uh, it's gonna be two in a in a month uh, at this age uh, it's interesting they're, yeah. they're like sponges and uh, you know language and, and and such so I bring her to town hall and she, she yesterday when we went she thought we were going to pick him up to take him to the Dean Park with us and she walked him to the front door and and no, then was did. kind of not understanding that grandpa was staying there and we were still going but uh, she loves to run town hall the, ha the hallways nice yeah you know and, and one of the you know our son uh, you know he Easton I used to take him to town hall because on yeah. Saturdays when the land was working uh, weekends uh, then uh, and the finance committee met on Saturday oh. so uh, finance committee met he came along with me and he used to love the hallways there. It was yeah. and DPW matched. was right down the street right. from D us. DPW, you love the DPW. And the director was his name was Jake, mm -hmm. and he used to go there and let him. He used to put him in the trucks and the tractors, and mm -hmm. in fact, he dressed up as Santa one year and surprised us at our house when I answered the front door and it was Santa, and I had no clue who it was, mm -hmm. and. 
Danny also got to go out um, Hurricane Gloria when um, Easton really was affected well, by I'm Hurricane saying, Gloria yeah. and I was working I worked in a hospital and I found out that um, our little two-year-old car seat was in the, the town it. car driving around looking at downed lines and trees yeah. and so, so I had he, to he do grew up in the, so he grew up in the business I had to do a quick call to the nursing supervisor please can I go home <laughs> and she let me go home you know but my son he he always grew up you know it's not a nine to five job it's not a five day a week job and we have pictures of him very small uh, Dan at things on Saturdays or Sundays sometimes in the evening when I was working and he'd be holding Danny and it that's just the way it was yeah, he used to love to go on the board of health there's a board of health person wonderful person always had a little treat down there for him and Grafton he became very close friends with one of the George Peterson who's um, state, state representative now. he he, was, state he was yeah he was a state rep but he was a selectman at the time and he became very good friends with Eric and um, you know before we moved there so it's part of our and, family and so what was it like in his early career in Shrewsbury oh the first time that was ah, that was interesting. it was it was I was I he was going to school also he was going to what was then called Central New England College because proposition two and a half was coming along and he was slated to maybe be elim his position eliminated. That was when you worked for Mr. Kearney. That's right. right. Yeah. And um, I worked at Hanneman Hospital at the time. I, and we didn't see each other much um, enough. <laughs> we stayed married. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he, he definitely, um, at that time, Mr. Carney was already his mentor. And Mr. Carney was instrumental in um, uh, uh, kind of not pushing him, but directing him. And that's where the Blackstone position came up. And he came home one day, we we're moving to Blackstone. And I'd never heard of Blackstone other than the Blackstone River. Right. Um, we're not from Central Mass originally. And um, so he, he still, he had a similar work style than um, that it, it's a learning experience for Dan. It's it's a daily learning experience, and that's not going to end. You know, he still will be Const well, learning. Well, you know, we talk about coming out here the first time. You know, I only came to Shrewsbury twice before I was hired. I, I had my initial interview with Mr. Connie, and then the second interview with Luann. He said, "Okay, well, I want to meet." Yeah. And, I'm, I, I, <laughs> and so, nobody believed me so, that so, I had to go so, on a so, so job we, so, interview. So we drove out here and he said, that, okay, you got the job. And I said, well, I need a place to live. I mean, you know, and, and he ended up calling uh, for, uh, Rollins Robinson. Mr. Mr. Robinson. Yep. He found us a place and, to live and there was a, in Boylston. And there was an apartment. Well, initially we had to go to Holden, remember? And we, really? And, and we, missed, we missed Ararat Street and we're up around like Route 2. On 190. Before you realized, uh, right? So and it we, was we, above a pizza place, right, and, and I so, was, I'm sorry, Dan. Uh, so we ended up in um, you know, a wonderful place in Boylston, and uh, after six months there, uh, we moved to Shrewsbury, Imperial and, and, Village on Route Nine. And yeah. then I got the job in Sh in uh, Blackstone, Blackstone. Uh, and so six months later, it was a move to Blackstone. We moved so, a lot. So uh, and uh, and there was two moves there. And then we went to Easton, where there were three moves. Wow. And you always... A little apartment, then we bought a condo, then we bought a house and with a yard for the kid. And then the move to... And then he left. The move to Grafton. <laughs> Again. Uh, and then choose to back to Shrewsbury. But the move to Shrewsbury was just, you were talking about that earlier tonight. Life-changing. It, it was just outstanding for it. our family. Well, our, our son was able to go to Shrewsbury High School. He, he hated us because moving he, he, we were moving. He, and um, we had just been three years in Grafton. We, Dan um, had been there more, but we had only joined him the last three years. And um, he was on the um, 
varsity soccer team and then we find out in august about shoes very i got to say my son and i neither one of us were thrilled about having to move again just a couple of miles but we did it and we moved him in january it's better to move a child during the school year then wait and have to do the whole summer and they don't know any long summer right it's 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 difficult as it sounds it's better to move during the school year and we moved him in january in fact for two weeks he went to grafton high and shrewsbury high because their midterms were not in sync oh. he really was not happy with us people with teenagers can imagine but he he got he got met he met a lot of nice kids and by by the summer he was doing captain's practices for soccer and so he got to go three and a half years to Shrewsbury High School and um, it was life changing and I, I don't even know how else to describe it we're we are, we are so blessed and he even agrees that Shrewsbury High School was such um, a unbelievable experience um, well, Dan Gutekantz was this principal and um, Ken Lodges obviously Ken Lodges. yes and, and, <laughs> I know him yeah, yeah I know you know him <laughs> and they just, just Mr. Nault I believe yes, was yeah. his yeah. guidance, guidance counselor yeah. wonderful man. And, um, and, and what would you add to so it's, look, it's just, just, just wonderful. I mean, uh, he had, you know, it, was, it could have been a disaster. I mean, you move somebody, you move, move a teenager midway through their freshman year of high school, that could be a, a bad situation, but. And he's still close friends with, um, it was mostly girls. He was in a large <laughs> group of I kids. I wonder why. <laughs> and it was mostly girls, and they're all, those girls are still all friends. And he married one of them, um, Amanda Walsh. Um, he met, was in that group, and they started dating senior year of high school. And she's my girl. I, I refer to her as my favorite girl. <laughs> and he's my favorite boy. And they met. So not only his education that is part of his success as an adult, um, he met his wife there who is our daughter and now we they have a family and um it just it wouldn't be this way without shrewsbury and we have a beautiful home and um i work in the community and good neighbors and great good, neighbors. good neighbors good walking <laughs> um i i work here um everything we're not leaving um you know mm -hmm. We're very, not going to fortunate. find a place to live that has the electric and cable rates <laughs> and tax rates and everything that we have in Shrewsbury. She can do a commercial. She right? could. She could. <laughs> so now, have you two had the chance to talk about what you want to do in July and August? No, we haven't. And she keeps trying to have that conversation, and I keep keep pushing. Uh, and I keep avoiding the conversation because I can't imagine. You know, I want to get to that point. Turn, so, in, turn in my keys and then on Monday start a new, I, I have new ideas. adventure. She has <laughs> vacation. Well, we just went on our usual June vacation that we have to do in June because of election and town meeting. And we know that next year we might be able to do it in May. Um, we, we, we go up to Maine on weekends in August. We'll continue to, we're going to do that. I would, we would like to do maybe something in September. Um, but that's kind of, we haven't decided um, where. Um, it depends on his schedule with what comes after. He will be teaching at Clark in September, so. Um, so whatever you do in September, you have to do it before school starts? No, it no. just can't be on a Wednesday night. We'll go oh. Thursday or Tuesday. So I'm still Wednesday. going to have certain restrictions on you will, our but schedule, it'll be, but it's okay. Yeah, and, and what it's are you okay. going to do when he's in the house? That's at night. That's well. No, we've but, already he's no. he's already has been you know post election and town meeting. He is home a little more, and I am very open and honest. Um, I'm not moving. I'm watching that show. <laughs> <laughs> and See, take is, a walk. Is, 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 is they like a dance program every night on TV? Don't is you that? love it? I love it. <laughs> 
I gotta tell Dance you, with is, the stars. Is, is that the same program? I, voice. Yeah, I don't do car racing. Is that the same program every night? No. So you have two televisions? Mark, yeah. Mark, is it? Thank you. Control <laughs> yeah. room says no, it is the I, same thing. I think D Dan and I, we, we're very, we do have some similar similar hobbies. You know, we love Just to not read. race cars. No, you know, no, I will all, never all go to racing, a race. Not his bike. If, we, if I ever, you know, there's only one time I did go down to Sebring to a car race with him. I stayed at Disney and went to a spa while he went to his car race. That was a good plan. I'm more of a spa girl than a That's, racing girl. Good. I, I can't, I, I think I would bring him down if I went. And he reads a lot? He reads a lot, only nonfiction, um, generally history. Speaking of that, we'll take time out. And I said, Dan, what tie are you wearing tonight? So I made sure the bag matched his tie. Right. So it's patriotic. So I wanted to get him a book of um, all the president's inauguration speeches, but because he is a presidential yeah. scholar, and yes. I mean that very oh. seriously. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Democracy Condoleezza Rice. Thank and you so, very much. although she's a Republican, I have <laughs> great respect for her. Actually, I wanted to read that, but we do well, read you. some similar books. We do. I like historical fiction, though. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, I do do fiction. Thank you so much. So uh, I wanted to make nice. sure I got it. him something, Thank and you. he has—he's read so many historical books that. I really thought, oh my word, how am I going to pick one out? He's just yeah. finished Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar. Oh. It's absolutely fascinating book. So if you, right now, if you were to say, what's the book that has left the most impression on you ever, what would it be? Mm, what a great question that is. Uh, wow. Wow. Was it Alexander Hamilton? I, I think the Alexander Hamilton uh, the, uh, uh, the and, and that's the book that the uh, musical is based on. Uh, that is a, that was a remarkable book, but there've been so many. See, I'm one of these very obnoxious people that happens to think that the book they happen to be reading at the moment is it's the, the best most one? best book ever. And you need to read it too, like and Julius Caesar. He'll tell people about it. He'll yeah. bring up conversation on vacation, like. He'll and they'll be like, and they're like, guy away from me. <laughs> oh my goodness, what is he talking about? At, at the moment, I finished Julius Caesar, but at the moment, I'm reading Winston Churchill, his first volume, The Gathering Storm. I'm reading a biography on Joseph Pulitzer, and I was reading Caesar, Julius Caesar. So those are the three I got going. Uh, I finished Julius Caesar, so I only have two going at the moment. So, and now I have a third. You sound so, so serious. So do you yeah. read one and finish it? Why do you read three to ten? Well, uh, because uh, that. truthfully, the, the, um, the Winston Churchill, Gathering Storm, his style of writing is, is, is kind of hard to stick with for too long uh, because he's using a lot of documents, so letters. He's re reprinting a lot of letters and memorandum. So when you're reading that, you've got to really concentrate on it. The Joseph Pulitzer is just one of those fascinating uh, stories about the rags uh, to riches of, of the American experience. You know, coming to this country and creating uh, his, you know, Pulitzer, you know, the Pulitzer uh, item, and and Caesar is just reading, just reading straight history. Well done. But there are so many great books, and that's the wonderful thing about books. I mean, you can just lose yourself in them. And um, so, do you think you'll sneak away from history once in a while? I, it, I don't know. I, I doubt I, it. I, I, uh, no. I, maybe my goal in retirement is read fiction. Maybe I don't know if I can nah. do that, but we'll nah. say. Uh, we also we I, both I, read the Sunday New York Times every week. That, that and that can take. Obviously, well, more than one take, day. To read it correctly, it takes forever. Um, I, I sort of ban us. One of the favorite things I like to do is go to bookstores, and we we, we actually went to a bookstore last week, and we have we ban ourselves from buying any books because you can't. You, know, you go to these old books. See, the way you think about reading non, non, non nonfiction is, you you go to these book sales. And we went to a book sale at uh, Wells Public Library last summer, and nonfiction you could pick up for, you know. Four dollars, five dollars, six dollars, uh, and you, just, you can read it. I mean, it's just wonderful. So, so, do you ever use a Kindle? I I prefer the experience of holding the book in my hand. Me too. Uh, I'll read the New York Times. You know, we have, have a digital a Nook, subscription, and yeah. um, it's been put away for about two years now. I couldn't read books on it. 
I need a real book in my hand. Well, I find it's good when you travel. Yes. Because you can't decide which book to bring. Yes. And you can do it that way. So for travel, it's good. But the only problem is, as you're reading, you can't remember the title because you never see the title page. When, yeah. Once you get rolling, you, you don't see that. And, yeah. and I miss that. I like holding the book. But with travel, I think the Kindle's good. See, I'm, I'm reconsidering my choice. Maybe it wasn't the Hamilton book. Okay, go ahead. I mean, there's just so many. I mean, it's hard you to... You like biographies. Yeah, biographies and... As yeah. opposed to just history. Yeah. There's so many. If you come to my office, i got tons of books. I try to and I'm push them off on people. I, she's, she's telling me I can't bring them home. Oh, really? So. There is no place. So there's, there's going to be... I'm going to send the box over to the library. There's already boxes down in the so. basement. Cool. And I said, please sort through before you bring these things home. I don't know where we're going to put them. I... <laughs> There's 20 years and, of and then stuff. And I, uh, I got old textbooks. and Oh, like textbooks, that. I know. From Clark. I know. So yeah. will you be able to part with those? Yes, yes. I got to look. I, I, in my mind, I've got this grand plan of how I'm going to organize the basement and the garage. And we did get rid of the Legos. Yes. My <laughs> son was a Lego maniac, and we, we had, I had saved all his Legos and all the books that went with them. And he did get them about two weeks ago. I said, they have to go because we need the space for your dad's things. Junk. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So so you'll probably get the one week. That'll all be done. Yeah. I'm, no, it's going to take more than one week. It uh, will? Yeah, I've got files from, I, I, I keep a file on every class I ever taught. And I've got them going back. Oh, well over 20 years. And you don't and need those? Don't need those. i got to call through that. And there might be some old articles that I'm going to probably want to recycle. And we want to do some things, you know, too. I I, you know, we love Boston. And, you know, I don't, I work part-time. And, and hopefully with whatever his new schedule will be, we'll be able to have a day that we can go off and do things here and there. So hopefully it won't be, this summer it will be a lot of yard work. Because uh, of our rainy spring, and, oh, you know, he doesn't have time in May, and it was raining and everything. We do have a lot to do that, and we we do have a, we have a pool, so um, we do a lot of what we call bobbing in the pool, and hopefully it gets warm enough. Um, so when you bob in the pool, do you swim laps? No, no just it's, good, around it's, it's, it's around two. It's around two. I just sort and of, he just sort of. I sort of got this he thing. I sort of, on it. I just sort of sit in the pool and just soak. And in then the, he gets out and he reads his book. Like a dog. <laughs> and then it, then uh, he'll go back in. Then he gets back out and he reads the book. More, that right. summer book generally falls apart because mm -hmm. it gets wet. Right. And then in the, the fall, hopefully, we, you know, we'll be able to do some day trips and weekend trips and things like that. But really, don't know. This is new. This is very new. Right. It's been 40-something years. I know. Yeah. You know? Well. And we've been together the whole time of it. Can you believe it? Yeah, we started when we were 19. Yeah. So. You wouldn't have graduated from college without me. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us about that? <laughs> well, you had to do four oh. consecutive mm -hmm. semesters right. of the mm -hmm. same foreign language oh. for our degree. We were yeah. both, we have the same degree. Um, Which is? Geography and Urban Studies. And, um, and four semesters of a language? Of the same language. So what language did you take? Portuguese. Portuguese. Because that is what we, we're Portuguese American. And, and we just decided, we, we had both, we didn't know each other in high school, but we had done French. And um, we went to Bridgewater State College. It was college then. And Portuguese was one of the, uh, being in Bristol County, well, they're not in Bristol County, but it is kind of. Um, is a big, big department there. So we, that's where we met. We met on the first day of that class, and he did okay. And then when it got into the composition, um, writing literature. and read, reading Portuguese literature and ah. writing papers in Portuguese, you know, composition, not just. It just. Let's, let's do it this way. I wasn't going to be able to get a job at the United Nations. <laughs> You were so, be an interpreter. So I was his tutor, kind of, sort of. So he made it through. Did his you use that as an excuse, or did she really tutor you? She no, she no. I mean, was well, that no. your intention, or were you just trying to be with her? At that oh, we had time? already been together uh, three uh, years. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's it's a. We had already uh, been it, together it, for a while. It, uh, 
Well, Wayne was an outstanding student. And look, Thank you. <laughs> and, when, and when you're not, you need to find someone who is. Portuguese language is not an easy language to study. So, so do you two converse in Portuguese? No, we have a couple of things. We, we'll, food? We we'll, we'll, <laughs> might say a food. Yeah. And we have a few little sayings right. that we say. No, we're totally mm. not I, literate I'm, I'm at sight, all in Portuguese. All. So. We su I survived. That was the important thing. I was in survival I mode. I survived Portuguese I was, I was for in four survival semesters. Mode, right? Yes, but I understand I, But that. I want to know, I excelled in other areas. So, so, oh, you know, I see. I don't see. make it sound like, you know. So did you have to tutor her in anything? Um, uh, air photo interpretation and, and, surve and surveying. And surveying. Oh. Yeah. I can't do geometry it came, yeah. at all. Surveying, it, you don't want me surveying your lot. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That wasn't pretty. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, my, my, my squares were triangular. Yeah, we had a, you know. Okay, so now we have two minutes left. Mm -hmm. okay. What would you like to say to the audience? Well, I, I'd like to say to the audience that uh, it's been an honor uh, and, a, and a privilege. Uh, and people have been wonderful and generous and kind and supportive. And it's been a wonderful opportunity. And I thank everyone uh, to the bottom of my heart, my family benefited. My family thanks everybody. And uh, uh, Townsend is, be, is going now going on to a new manager. We saw we got you know we had three selectmen here tonight, and you know the way they interact with each other. It, it's just so. It's such the a pleasure. It's a so good important. team. It is. So look, look, selectmen are critical to the success of the community, and the town has been so fortunate for so many years, for decades, uh, to have people like yourself and other, all the members of the board that I've worked with who come uh, into office with the sole intention of doing what's best for the community. Uh, and then having so many wonderful department heads, employees, staff, volunteers. It's, look, it's, it's a total group effort and anyone... They're our village. Yes, and everybody's been wonderful. And, uh, and I, I stand uh, as a proud uh, resident of Shrewsbury, and, uh, as we do, and will continue be proud residents of Shrewsbury. And it's a perfect time for us both to thank and all of the crew. Right, the crew for so many Unbelievable. years. Unbelievable. You know, Mark has been listening to my stories now for years. <laughs> he's, he's, he's about ready to pop a bottle of champagne back there. He probably can predict what's what, going what, to be right. said next. And, and you, of course. And if they don't the, stop all, talking. All, all the work you've done, lining up the guests, doing this. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, it couldn't have been done without you and the crew. and. And look, we're able to, to voluntarily terminate the show as opposed to being canceled. And I think that's very important. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for watching Ask the Manager with Dan. And um, be he'll back. be watching. Thank you. Well done.